Just a quick disclaimer, I've uh, spoken with my legal team and they've advised that I make a statement just before we start filming. United Utilities have asked that I present accurate facts to the public and have threatened me with legal action. However, I've asked United Utilities for their data and evidence, but they have not always been forthcoming, accurate, or have withheld information from me. Please enjoy the film. My name is Matt Staniek. I'm a zoologist and this is my home turf, Windermere. I'm incredibly worried about the water quality of the lake and how it's impacting its wildlife. So today, I'm going to kayak from the top end of the catchment all the way down to Windermere to show you just why I'm so concerned. Time to get in the river. I've stopped the oar. Oh, <laughs> That was a good start, wasn't it? Should we just call it, call it quits there? <laughs> I know it looks ridiculous, but I suppose this is the main thing that I've really wanted to highlight in this top end of the catchment. This is really where the river starts. You know, just at this point, the only input that we've got is farming. You know, this whole valley is farmed by a local farmer. Chris and his family has farmed the land that follows the river down the fell for generations and is so keen on keeping the river healthy. We've planted, I think, something like 15 to 20,000 trees this regenerating the habitat up there and keeping the water clean. This area here is called a riparian strip and basically the farmer plants trees along here and it just stops all the erosion coming down, especially when the tree roots hold that soil, hold all those rocks in. And as you can see in the water, it's just crystal clear. There's no other input and like as we're going along, we see things like dippers, there's loads of fish in this river, lots of little creepy crawlies that are the fish love to eat. And you know, it's just exciting to see farming in this way. It's totally on the right direction. As I'm like slowly walking along this river, you can just, it's just life everywhere basically. Within the river itself, there's loads of aquatic plants. On the sides, there's loads of flowers. And then when you start looking more and more, you start seeing little things like frogs, dragonflies, dippers. It's just, this is what every single river on the Lake District should be like, just like this. Having to drag the kayak along the shallower top end of the river wasn't ideal. I promise that this was deliberate to show you where Windermere's water was coming from and not just an oversight on my part. Come across the first obstacle. This seems like a good place to stop and just explain what's going on in the Windermere situation. So, the main problem that we're seeing is the nutrient phosphorus is going into Windermere in massive, massive quantities and making the lake eutrophic. And that's when we get these big algal blooms which depletes the oxygen out of the water, basically starving fish of the oxygen. And when speaking with United Utilities, they break down the phosphorus input into Windermere into three categories. The first is from their assets in which they say that's around 40% of the phosphorus input into Windermere. Then there's farming and then there's septic tanks. But when you actually look at this data set that they're using to break this down, they don't collect all the data sets that they could from their assets. So they don't measure the volumes of storm overflow discharges. They don't sample it. So we don't actually know what's coming out in these storm events. And when we actually look at how well their assets are running, they take a best representative sample to give us an indication of just how well their sites are working. So United Utilities are saying a significant part of phosphorus into Windermere, 30% of it, is due to farming. If I believe that, then I probably wouldn't do this. If I just grab this glass here and take a big swig out of the water, I have no problem taking a drink of this water. And this water here only has farming input into it. I don't see farming being one of the main issues that we need to solve in the Windermere catchment. I really don't remember this river being quite like this. 
if I'd have known. And I don't think I would have taken the kayak up all this way. Down to the river, I have held the devil's hand. I've been actually really quite surprised with just how many aspects of this river I've never seen before. Like, I did not expect to find that waterfall, have to go over it. So we've just come down this beck off the fell side, and we've just met one of the main rivers that flows into Windermere. This one here is the River Rothe, and I want to show you the difference between a river that has really quite minimal phosphorus input to one that has much more phosphorus. So you see that rock there? Nice and clean. And that's from the beck that comes off the fell side. But the main thing I want you to look at is this algae. And basically this algae here loves the phosphorus. And one of the inputs of phosphorus into this river we can thank United Utilities for because Grasmere Wastewater Treatment Works that sits just at the top of the Rove, just in Grasmere, spills untreated sewage. As I paddled further down the river, I came across another one of United Utilities sewage treatment works that spilled untreated sewage for over a thousand hours in 2020 and 2021. This is Ambleside. So we've just come past Ambleside Wastewater Treatment Works, which sits just there. This is apparently, according to United Utilities, is their final treated effluent pipe. If you look at just the end of it, you can actually see a mysterious cloudy substance coming out the end of that pipe. And basically, anything above this pipe, you know, it doesn't look great, but it's not completely dead. But anything south of this pipe, the water just turns horrendous. And I suspect that what we're seeing coming out of that pipe is a big contributor to that. Farmer Chris has his suspicions about the impact that this is having on the water quality this far down the catchment too. Yeah, we've, we've had a few problems over the years. We had a thing called Campylobacter amongst the sheep. And it was only in one batch of sheep, and it was the sheep that joined the river down there, which floods every now and again when it's heavy rain. And one of the reasons we think we got Campylobacter, because it's a self-contained flock we have, which don't go anywhere, was that they've, they've got the Campylobacter from the river. And as a result of that, I think uh, 70 or 80% of the sheep slipped lamb. Experts from Windrush Against Sewage Pollution who collect and analyse information on water quality and sewage discharges have the hard facts about what United Utilities are up to. So if rainfall causes a sewage treatment works to reach its treatment capacity, then it's permitted to dump an excess over that um, treatment capacity to a nearby watercourse. So if such discharges happen during dry weather or before a works has reached its capacity, then it's illegal. And Ambleside has done this in 2018, in 2019 and 2021, on average 15 times a year. We're unable to analyse 2020 in detail because they've withheld the data. And in fact, they've done this um, for another 2,000 storm overflows. United are, are very particular about um, holding back data so that we can't analyse what they're doing in detail. We need to recognise and remember that we're in this terrible state because of deliberate commercial decisions made by the water industry over 30 years plus. They've decided not to spend £72 billion pounds on investment on fixing the problems in our infrastructure and to take it as dividends. This hole in the infrastructure is not our problem, it's the water industry's problem. And when they want to engage with communities and spend money investing on fixing other things that are habitat or something associated with waters, they're avoiding the issue. They're taking our eyes off the focus. The focus is they are breaking the law. They're breaking the law and they're making profit from us. And we need to be really careful that we don't get sucked in to some greenwashing exercise that drags us into years and years of monitoring the destruction of our own water. The time has come to end this, stop pollution, get the water industry to spend our money on fixing the problem. So here is the telltale sign of excessive phosphorus. And to be honest, I don't want to get out of the kayak. I don't even let my dog Bo go swimming in this river anymore because it's just absolutely 
disgusting. If you just look at the rocks in this riverbed, it's just covered in this horrible slime. And this is a direct result of excess phosphorus in the system. And you know, I don't think this is a coincidence that we've seen what the river looks like above Ambleside Wastewater Treatment Works, and this is below Ambleside Wastewater Treatment Works. And essentially, this river is just slowly dying. To test my suspicions of the damage to the river, Dr. Nick Everill performed an invertebrate survey above and below the sewage treatment works on behalf of Wild Fish, an organisation committed to eliminating threats in our waterways to biodiversity. They took a three minute kick sweep sample, which is the standard environment agency protocol. The results that came back um, showed that below the sewage treatment works, there was a 44% decline in species present. Some of these species that were missing were clean water loving species, um, so obviously indicating a biological impact um, below the sewage treatment works. We need consistent monitoring of these sewage works to continue to show undeniable evidence that they are causing the most damage to Windermere due to lack of investment to cope with the tourism industry. As for my kayak journey, it was coming to an end as I reached the lake itself. This is England's largest lake and where all the water pollution in the catchment collects, causing severe algal blooms, which is heavily impacting its ecosystem. So we finally made it here to Windermere Lake itself. This morning, we're at the top end of the catchment. We followed the river all the way down into Windermere Lake and we've seen firsthand the impacts that pollution is having on these waterways and it's absolutely unacceptable. But there is something that we can do. We can collectively add our voices together and hold those organisations, the people that are in charge of this to account and we can help save Windermere. We know who's responsible for much of the pollution here. We also have experts and data proving the illegal activity and detrimental impacts to our ecosystem. We cannot let those accountable get away with it. Water quality affects everything and everyone. We are slowly watching our lake die. To help solve this crisis, please visit savewindermere.com. <laughs>